Hello and welcome to the Dave's Daily Downbeat. Today's song is Times Like These from the Foo Fighters. It comes off of their 2002 album One by One. We actually did a podcast episode with Patrick Shipley from the band Faith Head about this song and highly recommend you go back and watch that because it was a great, great episode. But today we're going to look at that song and it's only fitting after looking at Nirvana last week. We're going to dive right into the lyrics on this one because there's so much to say about it. And what's going on in the world right now really makes you ask some questions. I, I'm a one-way motorway. I'm the one that drives away, then follows you back home. I, I'm a street light shining. I'm a wild light, blinding bright, burning off alone. It's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these, time and time again. I, I'm a new day rising. I'm a brand new sky to hang the stars upon tonight. I am a little divided. Do I stay or run away? And I leave it all behind. It's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you learn to give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. Very, very simple lyrics there, but a very, very deep message. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like, comment. What does this song mean to you? We're going to go a little deeper into it, but I want to know what you think of times like these. What does this mean to you? What does this song mean to you? What time comes to mind when you think of times like these? Is it a time when you were maybe like isolated or alone? Is it a time when like there was something new going on, like a fresh start, maybe your first day of college, maybe your first day or semester away from home, away at school, maybe something like that? Is there excitement involved? Is there fear involved? What is it that you feel when you think back on that time? And... You know, so we're in a COVID-19 pandemic going on here. We are in uh, the midst of an election that is a polarizing event. We've got the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We've got civil unrest in the nation and all over cities across this land. Uh, there's a lot going on, and this and times like these are really, really pushing us into the narrative of this song. And what's interesting is whatever time frame we're in, whatever time like this that we're, we're, we're focusing on and a part of, it seems like the world's narrative is always death and decay, pain, suffering, separation, isolation, when it really should be a call for us to, to walk together and be together and, and, and focus on community and focus on the elements of commonality instead of the things that tear us apart. And I think that's pretty paramount because our perspective and focus is what we should really be looking at. And while the wisdom of the world is irrational, the wisdom of our Heavenly Father and our Creator is always stable. It's always constant. And so I think a good place to go today is probably 1 Timothy 4. Um, and we're going to look at 1 through 5. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be reserved with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Now, there's a lot to say here, um, and, and quite honestly, this is all really good. Paul said the false teachers were hypocritical liars who encouraged people to follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. The danger that Timothy faced in Ephesus seems to have come from certain people in the church who were following some Greek philosophers who taught that the body was evil and that only the soul mattered. The false teachers refused to believe that the God of creation was good because his very contact with the physical world would have soiled him. Though these Greek-influenced church members honored Jesus, they could not believe he was truly human. Paul knew that their teachings, if left unchecked, would greatly distort Christian truth. 
Satan deceives people by offering a clever imitation of the real thing. The false teachers have stringent rules, such as forbidding people to marry or to eat certain foods. This made them appear self-disciplined and righteous. Their strict disciplines for the body, however, could not remove sin. See Colossians 2, 20-23. We must not be unduly impressed by a teacher's style or credentials. We must look to his teaching about Jesus Christ. His conclusions about Christ show the source of his message. We must not be unduly impressed by a teacher's style or credentials. We must look to his teaching about Jesus Christ. His conclusions about Christ show the source of his message. And the reason I really wanted to go to those verses today is because you're hearing all kinds of um, narratives right now. You're, you're hearing everything about what should be done, how it should be done, who is the right narrative? Who's the wrong narrative? And all of these crazy things. And times like these do that. When there's a crisis going on, when there's something of monumental importance, people start to listen and they start to look for who's right, who's wrong, what's the narrative. And I'm telling you right now, the narrative is in your heart. The narrative comes from the Holy Spirit. The narrative is from our Creator. It's from God. It's from Jesus Christ that walked this earth and what he had to say about what's going on. And I'm telling you, he's the source of eternal life. And if we're looking at anybody in this world that's going to perish, that doesn't really have the answers, if that's who we're going to for answers, then we're doomed. We're doomed for death because we're not looking at the source that offers eternal life. That's really what I wanted to focus on today. In times like these, who are you going to look at? Who are you going to look to? And what are you going to be? Because it's easy, it's so easy to fall into narratives and situations where life gets the best of you and you start to lose focus. And for whatever reason, when we're in this kind of situation, when we're in turmoil, stress, um, frustration, it seems like sometimes our focus gets redirected and it either goes in one of two different directions, to the world or to God. And so I'm asking right now, in this time, where is your focus? And Because that's pretty important. It's very important. It's not a Donald Trump narrative. It's not a Joe Biden narrative. It's not a media-driven narrative. It's not a conspiracy-driven narrative. It is a Jesus Christ narrative, and it's a narrative that's been playing out since the beginning of time. Humanity has not really changed all that much, but the remedy to it all has never changed as well. And putting our focus and our hope in Christ is something that has been passed down for generations, and it has been given to us as a gift, and it's up to us to reach out and attain that. Because I'll tell you what, I have seen the biggest transformation and the greatest miracles happen where Jesus Christ is at the center of it and his foundation is laid in the lives of others. And so you can take that to the bank today. In times like these, what's going on for you? And I tell you what, we're not covering it today, but another song from the Foo Fighters known as The Best of You really, really runs into this narrative as well. In times like these, who's getting the best of you and how are they getting the best of you? So you can take this all to the bank. I want you to remember to keep walking in love, love God, love people, and love Pat. You guys take care, and we will catch you tomorrow. <laughs>